Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning service from Libanus Church. I just want to wish you all a happy new year, as this is the first Sunday that we th- gather together in 2021 to praise Jesus Christ. I'm reminded that Libanus Church has existed uh, in its own right and with its own building from 1782. And that's a long time, isn't it? And every year of that, it has been proclaiming that Jesus is the way to get to heaven, that only Jesus is the way to get to heaven. And so as we begin 2021, it's a new start for many of us. But for the church, it's the same message of power, the same God, the same Jesus. And so this year we're going to be thinking about how Christ still is the only one to save us from our sins. I'm going to pray and then we'll have the announcements. Father, we thank you that we have gotten this far through a very difficult and hard year. We thank you that we can be on the end of that year and we can know and we can look back and through it all, we can know that our God was good. And so we do ask for you, Lord, that you would encourage us now, that you would bless your church. We pray for everyone watching this video that they would have a happy and a blessed 2021. And Lord, we know that there is no deeper blessing, no richer joy than knowing Jesus Christ this year. Amen. Well, I've just got one announcement this morning, and that is that this year we're going to do something a little bit different. And what we want to do this year is to show that we have a love, a care and a concern for the people living in our area. What we're going to do this year is, through over the, over the course of the year, we are going to be praying for the whole of Morriston. So in every street around Libanus, we are going to be praying for them. And so the way that we're going to do this is that every week as a church, we are going to pray for three or four different streets. And over the course of a year, we will have prayed for every street in Morriston. And we don't just pray for the streets, of course, are we? But we're praying for the people who live in those streets. We pray that this year they might come to know that Jesus Christ offers life. And so if you head to our website that we're using throughout the coronavirus period, uh, www.libanussermons.com, you'll see a new section entitled Pray for Morriston. And if you click on that section, it will show you the three streets that we're praying for this week. But we as a church, we want to reach out to those people. We want to show love and care for those who live around the church. And so we're going to be praying over the course of a year for everyone in Morriston, for every street in Morriston. So I hope you'll go onto the website and see the three churches that we're praying for this week. I hope you'll join us in prayer as we pray for them, that they would know peace and comfort this year. But more importantly, that they will know the peace and comfort of Jesus Christ. We're going to begin our time of worship together as we sing our opening hymn, Mighty Christ from Time Eternal. It's a great reminder that as we start this new year, Christ is the eternal God. He is the mighty one who is infinite. And after we've sung this great hymn, we're going to have our reading, which will be taken from Exodus chapter 15.
morning is taken from Exodus chapter 15 and we'll be starting at verse 22. Then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days into the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Marah. And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a log, and he threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute, and a rule, and there he tested them, saying, If ye will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, and do that which is right in his eyes, and give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water, and seventy palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. Well, should we just gather for a time of prayer? Father, we thank you that you are an all-powerful being. But more than that, we don't just thank you that you're the creator. We don't just thank you that you are the all-loving God. We don't just thank you that you made everything, that you sustain everything. We don't just thank you that you are where life originates. But we thank you that you loved us as people. And we thank you that you stepped down into this world after we'd gone against you, after we'd done wrong things. We thank you that you still cared enough about us to want to save us, to want to rescue us. And so we come to you now and we pray that this new year, this new start, this new beginning, we ask that you would show us great comfort great peace. We pray that we would start it holding firm and holding fast to the Saviour's cross. We do pray, Lord, for the people of Morriston, for the people who live around our church. We pray for the hospital in Morriston, for all of those who work there, for all of the chaos and hardship that this year has brought. We pray for the new year. We pray that they might find comfort in Christ. We pray that you would be with them, that you would be strengthening them. We pray that as we're still entering into an uncertain year, we pray that people would realise that they cannot rely on anything. They cannot trust anything. They cannot put their confidence in anything except the glory and the strength of Jesus Christ. We pray that you would reveal yourself to many, opening hearts, opening eyes. We pray that many people will come to know you as being not just God, but their God, their Saviour, their King, the one who loves them. Father, we thank you for a new year. We thank you that through all the difficulties and hardships, we, th- we praise you that you got us through the last year. For all the difficulties, we know that you never fors- forsaked us. You never abandoned us. You never left us. And Father, we pray that this year might be marked by us knowing you in a greater way, in a larger capacity. We pray that you would fill us Fill our hearts with joy and praise. This year we pray that we would know Jesus Christ more than we knew him in 2020. Bless us, not because we deserve it, but bless us because you are a God of love who cares about us. Amen. Well, as we celebrate the new year, we're going to continue to remember God As a God who never forsakes, who never lets us down, a God who is always the same. 
And we're going to do this as we sing together Rock of Ages. Well, before we begin our time together, should we pray? Father, we thank you that you are the same yesterday and today and forever. We thank you that we can pray to you as an almighty God who is never going to change, never going to alter your eternal characteristics. We thank you, Lord, that though this world changes so often, we thank you that you are dependable. And so we come to you now as we approach your throne, as we come and we think about your glory, think about your majesty, as we think about the new year, we pray that you would be with us. We pray, Lord, that you would speak. Amen. Well, welcome to our first Sunday service of 2021. Many of us will still be writing 2020 for quite a few more months now, but Welcome to our first service of 2021. And as we begin, I just want us to be thinking, so often we use phrases, don't we? Like, the grass is always greener on the other side. I'm sure for many of us, that phrase means a lot to us. For many of us, 2020 has not been the year that we've wanted. It's certainly not been the year that any of us have planned. In fact, 2020 has been the year in which everything we have planned has seemed to have been cancelled. And so there should be a deep desire within all of us for something different this year. We all want 2021 to be something different. We want a gap from the pain and from the misery. We want to be able to see people again safely. We want to be able to meet and spend time with one another. I wonder, in your mind at the moment, are you hoping that 2021 will bring more joy, more happiness, more favour? We all want a better year this year, don't we? However, what I want us to think about this morning is that unless we move into this year, Holding firm to Jesus, with a firm grip on Christ, 
then this year is going to be as sad and miserable as last year. Because in this world, there's a lot that can change and a lot can happen. But only in Jesus Christ is there hope. Only in Jesus Christ is there an alternative. Only in Jesus Christ is there an answer. And so I want to encourage us as we start this year, let's start this year well. Let's start the year well. Let's start it by drawing close to Jesus. Because no year that is spent living close to Jesus is a year that's wasted. In fact, as we look back on our lives, some of you have been living considerably longer than me. But as you look back on your lives, the years that you've wasted, aren't they the years that you weren't close to Jesus? And so today I want us to look at two very short points. The first one, I want us to think about our grumbling. And my second point is looking at God's answer. Our grumbling, but God's answer. So my first point, thinking about our grumbling, thinking about how miserable we can be. And those of you who know me know that I can, every now and then, I can be a little bit miserable. But whenever we face a new year, we're often nostalgic, aren't we? We often look back and we meditate and we think and we almost relive everything that we've done in that year. For those of you who are on social media, so often people post photos of uh, what they've done that year. And sometimes people post photos, one photo for every month of the year. We love looking back and thinking about what we've been doing over the previous year. We love to look back and think what we've achieved, to think how far we've come, to look at our accomplishments, to look at our New Year's resolutions, which maybe we didn't break as quickly as we broke last year. But we like to look back on a year and we like to think that we've done something with it. We like to think that we've achieved something. And this year, I'm sure it has been much harder for all of us to achieve something. Much harder for all of us to not make our New Year's resolutions. For many of us, we've had government orders not to go to the gym. Whereas normally, it's just laziness keeping us away from the gyms. But I want us to look at the children of Israel. And the children of Israel in the Exodus story... What a time period they have just lived through. Look at what they have just witnessed. They've witnessed years of slavery, hundreds of years of them being in Egypt. And they were crying out to God for rescue, for help, for relief. They were crying out to God as the only one who could save them. And then God picked a man and God sent someone. God sent Moses and God worked through Moses to do brilliant and amazing things. The ten plagues of Egypt. God showed that he was mightier than the, the strongest empire on the earth. God beat. God overcame. God was mightier than the Egyptian empire. God then opened up the Red Sea for them to pass safely between it. Think of all of the miraculous things that God has done for them. They went to bed as, as slaves. They went to bed not free people. And they woke up to Pharaoh saying, just get out. God has won, just leave. What a fantastic year the children of Israel must have had. Freedom. And this is where we read in verse 24. This is what we read about the children of Israel after this fantastic time of freedom. We read in Exodus 15 verse 24. And the people grumbled against Moses. After everything that God has done for them. After the freedom found in God. After he liberated them. 
after he set them free from captivity, what do they do very shortly afterwards? They begin grumbling. And if you know the Exodus story, these are the people who often groan and often mumble. They often know no is unhappy. They're not content with what God has done for them. And we can look and we can think about the amazing things that God has done for the children of Israel. And we can say, how and why were they so ungrateful? How can you be grumpy? How can you be uncontent? How can you be miserable when God has given you freedom and life? However, all of us, by our sinful nature, are naturally grumblers. We're naturally ungrateful. We've just had Christmas and many of you might have been ungrateful for Christmas. Many of you might not have been as grateful for the presents you received as you should have been. Many of you might not have said thank you with the same sense of excitement as you should have done. We're all ungrateful people. And this year, 2020, has been so hard and so difficult. And I'm sure many of us are glad to see the end of it. But let me remind you this. If you're a Christian listening to this video this morning, let me remind you that you deserve nothing from God except for his eternal wrath and his eternal judgment. The only thing that you've earned from God, the only thing that you deserve from God is his judgment, is his separation. And when you think about it in those terms, you start to realise that you are deserving of nothing. I am deserving of nothing. And yet I want you to think how good has God been to you this year? God has kept you. If you're a Christian and you went into 2020 knowing Jesus Christ and you've come out of 2020 knowing Jesus Christ, that's not because you're great. That's because God has kept you. That's because God has held on to you. Even in this hard and difficult year, God has been good. God has been mighty. If you know that Jesus has forgiven you, if you know Christ died for your sins, how can you grumble and moan and complain about this year? If you know that Jesus Christ has set you free, then this year has been hard and difficult, but God has been faithful. Through everything, in everything, God has been good to us. God has given you more than you deserve. God has loved you more than you deserve. I love the phrase in Exodus where God says, I have heard my people's cry. In 2020, there's been a lot of that, isn't there? A lot of crying, a lot of moaning, a lot of pain. And God has not forsaken you. I wonder, have you come out of 2020 grumbling that you couldn't go on holiday? Or have you come out of 2020 saying that was a horrible year, but God was good? Even in the difficult times, even in the hardest moments, our Saviour has been with us. God is mighty and he's not forgotten his church. He doesn't forget his people. He doesn't abandon you. And I'll be honest, at the start of this year, when it came to January 2020, I never thought the year would unfold like it has. I never thought I would be burying people. I never thought we'd have so many funerals as a church as what we've had. I didn't think we'd go through such difficulties and trying times as a church that we've been through. I didn't think there'd be a global pandemic that shut the country down for months. 
I didn't know I'd be away from friends and family for so long. 2020 has been a really hard year. But you know what? I can't grumble. I can't complain. Because even in this difficult time, even through the hardships and the tears that we've shared this year, I know that in every second, in every moment of 2020, my God was with me and my God was good. And I pray that you knew the same in 2020, that your God was with you, that he was good, that Jesus Christ is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Someone who will never abandon you, will never leave you. 2020 has been a hard year, but you have been blessed if you're a Christian. If you know Jesus Christ, you are blessed. When God shouldn't have shown us grace, when God shouldn't have listened to our prayers, when God shouldn't have answered us, he did. And even in this difficult year, I wonder if you can say as a Christian, I can't complain, I can't grumble, for my God is good. My second point is God's answer. So really, I've been looking at the past year and how it's been difficult and hard. But every step of the way, God has been with us. Every step of the way, Jesus has not forsaken us. But now I want to look at God's answer, God's response to how we can enjoy 2021. How can we make this a positive year? How can we make this a good year? How do we make the most of 2021? Well, I'm going to be focusing on primarily one statement from God. And the statement I'm going to be looking at is found in Exodus 15, verse 26. And verse 26 is a really powerful and meaningful verse. And verse 26 begins by saying, diligently listen to the voice of the Lord. That's why I want us to focus on how we should diligently listen to the voice of the Lord. As we begin this year, you might have all sorts of plans and ideas. All the holidays that were cancelled, you might wish to, to go on this year. But I think what we can really do to set ourselves up for this year is to make sure that in everything we are listening to the voice of God. Whatever our plans are for this year, I'm sure we'll accept that we don't know if they'll come to pass. Our plans for last year were ruined and we don't know what's going to happen this year. But we need to listen for God's leading. Both as a church and as individuals, we really need to be seeking God. We need to be thinking and praying and asking God, where next? What do you want me to do? Where can I serve you? How can I build up your kingdom? These are big questions for us to ask ourselves. But we need to listen. We need to be receptive to God speaking. The world has so many different competing voices, doesn't it? I don't know if you watch many singing competitions, but you listen to somebody and you think, oh, they're brilliant. They're the best singer. And then you listen to another singer and you think, no, actually, they're the best. Then you listen to another. And in programmes like The X Factor and uh, all of those types of shows and The Voice, everyone is competing for their voice to be heard, for their voice to go on and to sell records. They're all competing against one another. In this world, there's so many different voices. There's so many different people you can spend your time listening to. I was talking to one person and, and they assured me that they had a favourite newsreader. Now, I don't really know how you can have a favourite newsreader, but, but this person assured me that they had a newsreader who was their favourite. And they said that whenever they listen to the news, they only listen to this particular person. 
The world has got so many different voices. In politics, you've got so many different opinions and sides. In economics, you've got so many different arguments and theories and ideas. In philosophy, you've got so many different thoughts. Some a lot more rational and sane than the others, but you've got a lot of different thoughts in philosophy. You've got a lot of different people telling you that you should do this to have a nice life. You should do this to feel fulfilled. Nobody in this world can seem to agree with one another, can they? How many different diets are there? All promising and saying they'll do the same thing. Hundreds of different diets, all saying, this is the true one. This is the real one. Ignore the others. Follow our program. Follow our plan. The world is just full of competing ideas and voices. And you know what? The reality is you can't trust any of them. Not completely. Not totally. There are good things in this world and there's intelligent people to listen to. But nobody is more intelligent. Nobody knows better. Nobody knows more than the God who knows everything. The God who foreknew everything before he even created it. Who are you going to listen to this year? Who are you going to spend most of your time being told the news about? Who are you going to listen to most for your political ideals? Who are you going to listen to most for the best hobbies to carry out? As Christians, we need to make sure that we are open to the voice of God. For the voice of God should speak with so much more clarity and authority than anyone else in this world. I urge you this year, hold firm. Hold fast to the word of God. The truth of Jesus is powerful. And as we know as Christians, the truth will set you free. If you know Jesus Christ, he can set you free from all of the hardships, all the difficulties, all of your guilt that you're facing because you've made mistakes in your life. Christ is a power to set you free. No other voice. No other narrative. Nobody else can compete with the voice of the Lord. This year, listen to God when he speaks. Open his word. Spend time with him. For no hour spent with Christ is a wasted hour. This year, listen to Jesus. For he is the one who draws near to us. God made known. God made manifest among us. Listen today to his voice. And the verse continues. Do that which is right in his eyes. We're not just called to listen to God, but we're called to act upon it. Now, I listen all the time to people, but I don't always do what I'm told to do. When someone says, oh, can you do this? I've listened, I've heard them, but I don't always do it. We're called not just to listen to God, but to act upon it. We are called to live very differently as Christians. As those of us who have been saved from everything, why would we want to go back to what Jesus Christ has liberated us from? When we read the accounts, of the Israelites being set free in the Exodus story. They've been set free from slavery, from bondage, from beatings, from cruelty. And you can think, why would they ever want to go back? Why would they ever want to go back to a life of slavery and misery? When God has given them freedom, why would they ever want to return to their old life? And it's the same for Christians. If Christ has set us free, why would we ever want to return to our old life? I urge you this year, why not try to live in a way that is pleasing to God? Why not try to do what is right? 
Why not try to improve your character? Why not hold firm, hold fast to the teachings of Jesus? This year will be a brilliant year for you if you become more like Jesus. If you acted more like Jesus, that would be a brilliantly successful year. And you're never going to do it perfectly. And this is the good news of the gospel. You're not called to live in a perfect way, which is a relief for me because I'm never going to manage it. But we're not called to live perfectly. Because if Jesus has set us free, we are forgiven. And it is because we are forgiven that we should want to be more like our saviour, Jesus Christ. It is because we are forgiven, we should want to do what is right in his eyes. We should want to please him. We should want to glorify him. This year, I wonder if character matters to you. I wonder if the way that you live your life matters to you. Live more like Jesus. My final point, I love the end of this verse. And I think this is such a powerful verse for 2021. I am the Lord, your healer. What a beautiful verse. This year we need healing. The sooner that we can all go back to normal, the better. The sooner we can spend time with friends and family safely and unrestricted, the better. What we are really in need of this year is healing. And God says, I am the Lord, your healer. There's a lot of people who are pinning their hopes on a vaccine. There's a lot of people who, for them, the, the fate of 2021 rests on finding a vaccine, finding a cure to getting rid of coronavirus. For so many people, that is the ultimate aim and the highest goal. Let me tell you this. Jesus Christ did not come to this earth to make you feel a little bit better if you've got a cough. Jesus did not come to get rid of the common cold. Jesus did not come to heal us physically. That was not the primary purpose of his mission. The primary reason Christ came was to heal us from a spiritual disease. I wonder what, what do you think is the most deadly or dangerous disease? Well, in terms of numbers, I think the Black Death is the most dangerous disease, isn't it? I think uh, some historians estimate that almost a third of Europe was wiped out by the Black Death. It was such a deadly disease. And once you got it, very few people were covered. But even the bubonic plague is not the most dangerous disease. It's not the most dangerous thing. The most dangerous thing is our sin. It's what we've done wrong. Because the mortality rate of sin is 100%. The mortality rate of sin is everyone. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. If we've done things wrong, what we are deserving of is death. All of us will die one day and we were never meant to. It was never part of the way God ordered society initially. But we went away from God and we brought sin into this world and death, sin, has a hundred percent death rate. The wages of sin is death. And there is only one cure. There is only one hope. In 2021, do not look forward to the vaccine as being the great cure of the year. The corona vaccine virus, in my view, will be the second greatest cure of the year. But Jesus Christ offers forgiveness. He offers rescue from yourself. This year and every year, Jesus Christ's promise of redemption, Jesus Christ's death on the cross, that will be the greatest cure this year and every year. For it is only by coming and repenting 
going to Jesus Christ, saying sorry for what you've done wrong. It is only through that that you can be made right before God. Rejoice this year. Rejoice and be glad because Christ has died on the cross. Rejoice and be glad if you know Jesus. Jesus has defeated death. Eternal death has been conquered. For Christ came to bring life. This year we all need life, don't we? We've all been reminded of the horrors and the difficulties of death. This year, Jesus, as he has been every year, is the Christ who brings life. The Christ who offers eternity. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Be sanctified by him. Live like him. But the most vital thing is that you know him. That you own him as yours. It's not good enough that your wife knows him. It's not good enough that your husband knows him. It's not good enough that your nan went to church. Do you know Jesus Christ? That is the most important thing. Jesus offers us forgiveness. Jesus offers us purity. Have great joy. Because who the sun sets free is free indeed. This year there is hope. Not because of the vaccine to stop COVID. This year there is hope because of Jesus Christ. For you, there's hope. For your friends, your neighbours and your family, there is hope in Jesus. Amen. Well, we're going to end by singing the great hymn that picks up on that theme. My hope is found in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness.
you for joining us at Libanus Church. Please do go over to our website and have a look to see which streets in Morriston we're going to be praying for this week. I just want to leave you with this great exaltation from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.